Welcome everybody to Mike and I's Crypto Tax Q&A, Ask Me Anything Banded for Your Crypto Taxes. Welcome everyone. This will be super fun because I know that tax is relevant to every one of us in our crypto affairs, but it is something that doesn't get fleshed out and talked about enough. And that's why I have arranged this Q&A with my good friend, Mike Bryan, very, very knowledgeable accountant and a specialist dental accountant, by the way, who has a keen interest in crypto. So he is uniquely, come on, that's like a, that's a gift from the heavens, right? That's every single box tick in terms of a dental, a dental accountant who also trades crypto. That's like bang on the money for what a lot of us need and a real, real, real niche there. So I'm not going to do very much talking. I'm going to pass the reins over to Mike. Mike is the is going to be our, our croupier, the man in charge tonight. And Mike's going to give his presentation and then he's, we're going to have a brilliant Q&A at the end. I know it's going to be brilliant because it was brilliant last time. Over to you, Mike. Thanks, James. Hi, guys. Um, thanks for giving up some of your Sunday to listen to all, th all things tax. Um, as thrilling as tax can be, it normally does pick up quite a good audience because, believe it or not, it's going to be the most expensive thing you'll pay in your career. Um, even if you buy that that, that dream practice, um, your, your tax bill will well outweigh the cost of the, of the practice. So um, what I'm going to do, I think I've got the ability to do so. I'm going to share my screen. I've Anyone just made you the host, Mike. I've just made you the host. So what you can do as well, if okay. you like, my friend, if you yeah. right click your, your thumbnail and hit pin, then you'll take up the full screen. Have you? Did you, did you catch that? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go for anyone that's seen this before. We are going to go over some old ground and maybe duplicating something that we've done a, a couple of months ago. Um, but certainly there's some new things in there. There's been some announcements and some new thought processes that HMRC have gone through. Um, so without further ado, um, let's just share. Beautiful. Can we all see that? Is that working, James? It looks good to me, my friend. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Uh, so James, yeah, kindly introduced me. Uh, I'm a partner at Humphrey & Co. We're dental accountants. We act for 1,500 dentists nationwide. Uh, we're members of the organisations on, on the screen. That's me. That's my contact details. I'm in the Facebook groups that you're all members of. Um, so if you need me, just pick me up, drop me a DM, um, and I'll come back to you when I can. As James always alludes to, don't rely on anything we, we speak about now because it needs to be tailored to your individual circumstances. What are we going to cover? I mean, I, I imagine we'll take probably 30 minutes of your time going through this and then the Q&A at the end. Um, James, I think if, if he's kind enough, we'll monitor the chat boxes. So if you do have questions, pop them in the chat boxes. Feel free to shout them out. Feel free to put your hand up and we'll come to you as we go. Um, we're going to talk about taxes. CGT, which is the main one for the majority in the room, and um, some other points, anyone trading as limited companies, and then the Q&A at, at the end. So to jump straight in, um, there's four possible options for you with cryptocurrencies and things you need to think about, income tax, CGT, corporation tax, and no tax at all. Of course, the, the the, the, third, the final one being the one that everyone wishes is, is true, but we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. Um, so income tax for the majority of you in the room probably isn't going to be relevant, okay? Um, if you are doing any mining, any uh, transaction approvals, any airdrops and things like that, then income tax will be relevant for you. And for any of you that are a sole trade dentist or have been a sole trade tent dentist, that will be taxed at your effective rate, be it 20%, be it 40%, be it 45%. And it depends on your other income as to what, what percentage that, that will fall in. It needs to be declared on your tax return as you go. It would be unusual, as I mentioned, and HMRC have, um, and I'll put the links at the end of the presentation. If any of you want the slides, just um, drop me a, an email, drop me a, a message and I'll ping them over to you. Um, HMRC have, uh, specific crypto guidance and legislation and um, it's all quite new it's constantly being updated there's even an hmrc forum which um, people are allowed to post questions on and hmrc will come back to you as well so um, there's a lot of information on there if any of you guys ever want to look at it 
Um, but HMRC have said it's unusual for crypto trades to be taxed under income tax rules. And the main reason being that you need to be, it needs to be almost like a full-time job in order for it to be income tax. Okay. So those of you that are trading, even you're regularly trading, it's unlikely that it will be income tax. Um, it's more likely that it will be CGT, which we'll come on to. Use of bots. So I've got a few clients now that are looking at using bots um, and making automatic trades when specifics come into line. Um, and for me, that's, and I'm theorising, it is more like mining, it is more using um, specific algorithms in order to make trades and may well fall under income tax. And if anyone is using bots, then definitely take advice on your own specific interest, uh, on your uh, specific circumstances. DeFi or any kind of staking, I think, could be interest. HMRC's def definition of interest income is pretty much, if it smells like interest, if it looks like interest, it probably is interest. <laughs> um, and you can work it out that, you know, peer-to-peer -peer lending is interest. If you pay money on debt um, because you borrow from a friend, then that would be interest income if you're lending the money. And um, so you should be able to take that into a crypto world. And if you are essentially lending cryptocurrency to someone and someone is paying you a return because you are lending them that money, then it may well be interest. It, it, it could be in your interest for it, for it to be interest. Um, because if you're not aware, everyone gets 500 pounds or one, well, not everyone, most people get 500 pounds or 1,000 uh, pounds of tax-free interest every year. Okay, if your total income, personal income is under 50K, you'll get £1,000 of tax-free interest. If your income is not over the additional rate, i.e. you're not paying income at 45%, then you will get £500 of tax-free income. And therefore, um, manipulating your finances to have some interest, if it's possible, could well be a sensible thing to do because it could well be tax-free. The main one for you guys, anyone that's personally investing in cryptocurrency, is going to be CGT, capital gains tax. Um, it could be corporation tax, but only if you are trading via a limited company. So some of you out there will have limited companies. Some of you may well have jumped through the hoops on, on Kraken or Binance or another platform that gets your limited company's name on the, um, the legal documents of, of who, um, who owns this um, wallet and trades and stuff like that. And if you have done that, and it's very important that you jump through the hoops, you can't just have a personal um, uh, account and, and designate it your company's account, okay? It needs to be in your company's name then you will pay corporation tax on income and capital gains tax. And companies have income tax and capital gains tax. Um, they're just both corporation tax rates, so they're both 19% at the moment, um, will be going up to potentially 25% in April 2023. Um, let's just let someone in, bear with. Okay. Uh, corporation tax and then no tax the fourth one in there that i mentioned um historically you could get away of calling uh, cryptocurrency investment gambling and if you're not aware gambling in the uk is tax free um, if you win in the casino you don't pay any tax on that in fact the casino pays a lot of tax for allowing you to gamble but it's a different story for a different day um i have a client who invested in bitcoin in 2014 i don't know a long 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 time ago um, and he put about 20 grand in and he was valued at about 8 million quid a couple of Christmases ago. Um, and then about two weeks after Christmas, he, he was valued at about 4 million quid. It's very volatile. <laughs> 2017, 2018, right? That, that would have been it. Sorry, say again? 2017, 2018, the end of the last bull run. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, it could well have been. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. 
and, and bless him, he didn't have a bank account that allowed him to cash out. So actually he was stuck. He couldn't get his money out. He eventually did get one. But um, yeah, it was, it was very volatile. Anyway, for him, the point being, because he was in it such a long time ago, we have argued that some of that was gambling. OK, that was allowed. But HMRC have now come out and said categorically that cryptocurrency investment is not gambling and therefore you cannot avoid tax if you're um, trading in cryptocurrency. So to drill down into the main one there, CGT, people think CGT is simple. In the main it is if you're doing very simple trades. Okay, if you buy something and then sell something, the gain is one, the sales value less the proceeds value. But if you're uh, averaging in, for example, and you're buying Bitcoin at different values, then actually working out that value is quite complex. Okay, so there's the, um, the, the process. You find your sales value, you deduct your cost to sell, you deduct your tax base cost. In other words, your purchase price, but it's not as simple as that. Deduct any costs to buy, so any, you know, any agent's costs, any platform costs. And then whatever you've got left is your gain or, or your loss. And that's what you need to report to HMRC. The The, the most complex thing there is calculating your tax base cost. Okay, sales value simple, the amount you sell it for, cost to buy, cost to sell simple, the amounts that uh, you're charged in order to buy or sell cryptocurrency, and the base cost not so simple. So, um, let's just into this quickly. Before we look at base cost, um, we'll just look at the CGT allowance. So everyone gets a CGT allowance at the moment, and it's £12,300 in this current tax year. That means you can make a gain of £12,300 and not pay any capital gains tax. It's a very, very nice allowance. It means that a lot of you will fall out, the, out of the need of actually reporting um, your gains to HMRC. If you go over it, you need to report it. If you sell, something for four times the amount of 12,300, four times the amount of the annual allowance, you still need to report it, irrelevant if there's any tax to pay or not. And if you don't, you can get penalised, you can get quite severe penal, uh, penal, uh, penalties if you, if you miss that one. Doesn't get abated, just like your um, income, sorry, not like your income tax, for anyone out there that earns over 100K will realise that the personal allowance does get abated, if you're a sole trade dentist, which is very expensive and costs you about five grand a year, you go through the, uh, if you're earning to between 100 and 125K. Um, CGT doesn't work that way. CGT is uh, a flat amount and it stays £12,300. It doesn't matter if you earn one pound or 10 million pounds, it remains. It is per person. And if you have a spouse, then there is the ability to transfer assets, investments, cryptocurrency to your spouse at nil gain, nil loss, which means that doesn't trigger tax, and then get them to sell. So if you were sitting on a £25,000 gain and you wanted all your cash and your spouse had no other gains, you could transfer half of your 25 k to your spouse and then get you both to sell it at the same time and you wouldn't pay any tax against okay? so this. Clever planning there if, if you are married and um, your spouse is happy for, for you to use their, their personal allowances. You do need to set it up properly. Again, you can't fudge it. You can't just um, sell it and then say, oh, half of it was my spouse's. You need to physically set, up, um, set your spouse up on the platform, transfer the cash across, sell it and do it all properly. And it's valuable. And it's potentially it's potential to change. And if HMRC want to make it less attractive to trade in cryptocurrency, the easiest thing is for them to remove or reduce the twelve thousand three hundred pounds. But um, it is it is possible. So keep an eye out on it. The rate's ten or twenty percent unless it's for, for crypto, okay? Residential property is different, but for crypto it's 10 or 20%. And quite simply, 
if you're a basic rate taxpayer, it will be 10%. If you're a higher rate taxpayer, it will be 20%. And if you straddle the higher rate tax, £50,270 in this tax year, then it's not cliff edge. What that means is the, the amount below 50,000 will be taxed at 10%. The amount over 50,000 will be taxed at 20%. Okay, so to reiterate that, you look at your personal income, dental income, any other income you've got, teaching income, you know, any employment you're doing, and then you see if that is going over the 50,000 or not. If it's already over 50, everything at the higher rate. If it's under, then some will be at 10%. And some may be at 20%. Okay. That's after you take off the, the £12,300 of tax free income, your CGT free income. This is massive, and this is something that a lot of people didn't understand at the beginning of cryptocurrency, but it is pretty, um, pretty common knowledge now. If you trade between Bitcoin and another coin, that is a taxable event. Okay. A lot of people thought, oh, if I don't take it back to fiat, I'm not going to have to declare anything. That's, that's not true. OK, if you move from one coin to another coin, then there, that is a taxable event. You need to calculate the gain to see if it's taxable. You need to do that over a tax year, work out your total gain to then work out if it needs to go on your tax return. And the amount of people that will be missing this um, is huge. And therefore, the amount of effort that HMRC will put into looking at this will also be pretty substantial because they know that there's a big hole there of people that aren't uh, recording and declaring their gains from cryptocurrency trading. So to go back to where I thought we were going a minute ago, um, the base cost, the, um, the most complex thing to calculate Chuck someone else in, bear with, hang on, there we go. Um, the first thing to think about is this thing called price average rules. Okay, and this gets a bit number heavy now, but you can't just look at, I'm selling Bitcoin and the last Bitcoin I bought was X amount and therefore that's the Bitcoin I'm selling. Okay, you don't choose which Bitcoin you're selling. There is a rule that you need to, calc that you need to use in order to calculate the value of your Bitcoin holdings or whatever coin you're holding when you sell it. Okay. So we look at a scenario. Um, in this scenario, we've got four transactions um, of varying values of Bitcoin purchases. Um, a quarter of a Bitcoin purchased at a thousand uh, pounds per Bitcoin, and then another quarter at two thousand, another quarter at two and a half thousand. And then at the end, one, one and a quarter Bitcoins at three and a half thousand. Okay. And again, don't, don't get too bogged down in the numbers. Um, simply, if you were selling Bitcoin, you would find the average cost of your Bitcoin to work out the gain. And in this example, the average cost was £2,875 per Bitcoin. Okay, if you add up all of the costs on the right, you'll get the total cost is 5,750. And they've got two Bitcoins and therefore each Bitcoin is 2,875 pounds. You can see that if you're trading a lot of Bitcoins or another coin, that doing this every single time is going to be very time consuming. Even more so if you're doing at the end of the year after having a year's worth of trading, you can get very bogged down. I know some of my clients have spent weeks going through their historic trading to try and work out what uh, trades they've done, to try and work out whether there's um, any gains to be reported to HMRC. Do it as you go or use software that's going to calculate it for you. And when you're using software, just vet it because there's some poor software out there that, that um, perhaps was American made and they haven't really thought about the UK rules when they've transferred it over to a UK um, uh, platform. 
Can I just say one thing on that, Mike? There is yeah. one called Coinly, which I used to use. Um, but with time, I real it's the most common crypto tax software. With time, I realized that they will happily let you tick the box on the website, which says you're from the UK. And then you would be working on the presumption that they've calculated it accurately for the UK. It actually mm-hmm. doesn't whatsoever. So I've learned of a website since called recap.io. And as you probably already discerned from Mike's lectures, from, Mike, from what Mike's lecture has been saying so far, that it is very difficult to track your affairs, given that you have to calculate your average price of entry. Uh, also that it isn't just applicable when you, when you crystallize into fiat, it's applicable when you crystallize into Tether, USDC, anything. It's so much easier to have software that does it for you. So recap.io is the best software that I've found for those in the UK who want to ensure that their CGT is accurate come the end of the tax year. I just wanted to jump in and say that because I thought that would uh, help things, Mike. Absolutely, James. Yeah, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Um, again, just to reiterate, sorry, someone else is in the waiting room, um, just to reiterate that if your gains are quite small and you're only dabbling in crypto at the moment, then you can probably ignore it because you're not going to go over that £12,300. The problem is if you're ignoring it now and you get to start doing better, putting more in, injecting more cash in, is then working backwards to find out what your original base cost is. So um, if you're like me, I have a spreadsheet, um, as sad as I am, and my spreadsheet tells me pretty much everything I need to, to know about my, uh, my current holdings. Um, so if we just look at an example in this scenario. Oh, no, sorry. Let's, let's look at this, actually. Why, why, why bother? Why do we do this? It's all about manipulation, and it's all about standardization. Um, FIFO is first in, first out, and it's something that accountants will talk about. And if you looked at a FIFO cost basis here, which means looking at the first Bitcoins you bought, then actually the cost here would be £2,075 per Bitcoin if you were selling um, if you were selling a, a Bitcoin, I think this looks at, okay? If, you were, if it was LIFO, last in, first out, which means you're looking at the latest purchase, then actually the cost is £3,500 for one Bitcoin. And you can see that that makes a huge difference in the calculation to HMRC. Um, that makes a huge difference in the calculation to HMRC as to actually what, what your gain is going to be. And therefore, it's very important that there's a standardization um, to, to stop people manipulating it. Because if I could pick one particular Bitcoin that I wanted to sell, then I can always make sure that I'm using all my reliefs available, that I'm not going over a taxable event, that, you know, that there's, there's possible, um, possible ways that I can get away with not paying as much tax and beating the system. We'll look at it in a bit more detail as well, because unfortunately it's not as simple as that, never is with tax. Um, But in this example, yeah, if they sell 0.4 Bitcoin for £4,000, then you can see that the cost is is one Bitcoin, which is half of the 2875. And they wouldn't pay any CGT in this year because they're below the £12,300. Now, take it one step further. And I'm not going to get too bogged down in this because this is very high level. This is exactly what your accountant should be looking at for you. But it is quite important for you guys that are trading. Is There's two other important things to think about when you calculate that base cost. And it's share matching rules. And it means that whenever you sell something, if you buy something on the same day, then they'll use that transaction first and you buy something within 30 days of selling something then they'll use that transaction first as well and if you're trading actually this can be a benefit in some way because you're deferring capital gains tax and the reason it was bought in is because as i mentioned the 12,300 pound cgt allowance is is quite valuable and what's um 
people used to do is they'll get to the end of the tax year, they'll realise they haven't used their capital gains tax allowance, and therefore they would sell some of their crypto, and we wouldn't be talking about crypto, it would be stocks and shares when this first came in, in order to get that gain, and then they would buy it back on the same day or the day after. And so they've crystallised this gain up to the value of the CGT allowance without actually paying any tax. And therefore, if they sold that stock or shares in the future, they would pay a lot less tax because this base cost has just gone up by the personal allowance. Okay, it's very good for planning. If you're looking at CGT, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're looking at crystallizing gains, it means that you need to sell something and not buy it back for 30 days. Okay, so if you're, if you're crystallized, if you want to crystallize a gain, you can't buy that coin back. You can buy a different coin. So as we mentioned, the different coins are different coins. You can't buy the same coin. I won't get too bogged down in this, um, but you can see that, well, let's go through it for an example. There's some transactions, as you can see, um, I won't read them out, but there's one that happens on the same day and there's one that happens at th within 30 days, the bottom two there, for the same day there and then 30 days is, is there. So if we looked at actually what the base cost was for this example, you would take the Bitcoin bought, bought on the same day that you sold Bitcoin first, okay, which is shown here. We sold just above the line above, 4,000 pounds was the sale we're looking at. And then we bought some Bitcoin back because the price dropped on that day. It can be a sensible thing to do, but in, for HMRC purposes, we need, to, we need to use that value for this game. We would then buy a look at the purchase that was within 30 days of the sale, which is shown here. Okay, just to go back. And then we would look at the price averaging. And I'll show you why it's important in the minute that we do all of this. This is the price averaging that was shown on the, on the previous screen, so 2875. So they sold 0.8 Bitcoin on the 10th of the 10th. That's made up of 0.2 on the same day, 0.3 that was uh, purchased within 30 days, and 0.3 of the historic portfolio. So your total base cost is 3,187. So for this one trade, they sold 4,000 pounds worth of Bitcoin. The base cost is 3,187 pounds. Now, if this wasn't true and these were rules weren't around, then the cost would have been 2,300 pounds and the gain would have been a lot bigger, okay? 813 compared to 1700. Now for you guys, if you're making trades, if the figures are bigger than these figures, if there's just these figures, then again, it's within that personal allowance, it's not too troublesome. But if they're bigger and you're doing more trades, you need to be calculating this because if HMRC come and ask and look at your records, then that's how they're going to calculate it. And there's a massive difference between knowing the rules and not knowing the rules. Again, it's all about manipulation, quite simply. It's the reasons they put these rules in place. Still good planning to be done. As I mentioned, always aim to crystallise your, your £12,300 of personal allowance, if you can. Um, why? If you invested in Bitcoin, 10 grand a year, we make some assumptions, 10 grand a year for five years, and the price went up 20% a year, lovely position to be in. If you didn't, plan it carefully, um, as, as an accountant should advise you to, then in this example, you would have lost out on about two and a half grand. You would have paid two and a half grand more tax should you have exited your position um, five years after entering it. Okay, so with good planning, you can mi minimize that tax.
Also, quite a nice tip, again, for those of you that are married and spouses and interested in, in perhaps what you're doing with the, in the crypto world or other investment world, is that you can, to avoid bed and breakfasting, you can sell from your portfolio and rebuy from your spouse's portfolio. Okay, that's allowed and that doesn't get caught by bed and breakfasting. So if you wanted to crystallize something, but you didn't want to be exposed to risk because of the price volatile of the investment in between that 30 day period, then you can exit the position and let your spouse enter the position the next day. And, and that's fine. Again, just clever planning. CGT allowance is, is use it or lose it. So if you don't use it, you can't carry it forward, it is lost. And actually, just a point here that, that I thought was quite interesting. Bed and breakfasting could be beneficial for those that are trading. So if you're doing lots of trades, actually the way the rules work is you're deferring that capital gains tax. Um, and that's essentially uh, exactly the opposite of what, um, or the exact reason that HMRC brought these rules in, because the reason bed and breakfasting rules are there is to stop people crystallizing that gain within the annual allowance um, exemptions. Um, and therefore, actually, you can defer your CGT gains if you make sure that you enter the position within 30 days of exiting it. Just some quick other points on uh, crypto, which will be relevant for you guys, especially with capital gains tax. 5th of April is the end of the tax year. Therefore, if you crystallise the gain on the 5th of April, you'll pay tax um, about 10 months after in January. If you crystallise the, the gain a day later, you would pay tax a year later. OK, so planning when you crystallise things are what is also quite important. If you want to exit a, a trade and get your cash out, then if you're near April, you may be best just waiting until 6th of April in order to, to sell that particular asset. Anyone that's uh, HODL or has pregnant gains, um, it's true. If you don't sell, you're not gonna pay any tax. Absolutely, that's the way it works in the UK. Different in America. Um, you can pay tax in America on pregnant gains, which is a pretty rubbish position to be in because your cash is all locked up in this investment. Even though that investment's done well, you still don't have any cash and you pay, you, you pay tax on that. Uh, in the UK, that's not true. You only pay tax when you crystallize again, when you sell it. Okay. Um, so if you don't sell it, then you're not going to pay any tax, but you are going to obviously be um, at risk to price variations. And this is massive. Anyone that's not got a will needs to get a will, especially if you've got some decent crypto investments. As I know of dentists that unfortunately have died and no one can get into their wallet because they haven't provided the information anywhere and also it's not, in, it's not made it onto their will. So if you want your, you know, your crypto portfolio to pass on to benefactors, then you need to make sure your will's updated. And you also need to make sure that there's some mechanism in place to get into your wallet and get that, get those investments out. Uh, yeah, we touched on tax reporting software. James has given you a good one, recap.io. I mentioned this reporting requirement if you're selling assets that are four times the annual allowance, you need to report it irrelevant if there's gains or not, or tax to pay or not. Make sure you declare losses as well. Any of you that are entrepreneurs running your own dental practice, um, going to have gains at some point in the future, if you make any losses, so long you report them to HMRC, they will offset future gains. Okay, so if you have any bad investments, then definitely make sure you're um, 
reporting them to HMRC, you should report them in the year you make them technically. It's not that strict, to be perfectly honest, but you should report them. And yet tax rules will, will change. So look at limited companies. Some of you in the room will be limited companies, trading as limited companies for your dentistry. Um, if you're a dental practice, then I pretty strongly suggest you don't bother putting um, these weird and wonderful cryptocurrency investments within that limited company. The reason being, is it saleable? Can you sell that asset? Will someone buy that asset? A dental practice obviously is valuable. We all know the heights that goodwill values have got at the moment in practices. And therefore, if you're selling that company to someone in the future, you don't want to muddy the waters with saying, yes, I want you to buy my dental practice. Um, you can buy the shares in my company. Oh, by the way, there's been some weird crypto um, cryptocurrency investments in the past five, 10 years. Um, that's going to scare them. They're not going to like that. They probably won't understand it. And therefore, you might be forced to sell the assets of your dental practice rather than the shares of your dental practice. And if you are a um, principal trading as a limited company, then you will pay a lot more tax. You probably will pay a lot more tax if you sell the assets of your dental practice rather than selling the shares of your dental company. Okay, you'll get something known as entrepreneur's relief or business asset disposal relief when you sell a dental practice, 10% tax. Um, you won't if you sell the assets and if you've got some cryptocurrency um, investments in there, you may blur the trading status of your company. If you're an associate, I've got no real qualms against you having some cryptocurrency trading in your limited company because no one's going to come and buy your associate company. So it's a lot more personal to you um, and therefore there's no big issue about um, doing some trades within that limited company. If you're a practice, yeah, think of a company structure if you want to do it within a limited company, create a new limited company, could be a holding company, could be a family investment company, could be just another uh, a sister company. Um, and get them to do it that way because you're not going to then force the buyer of the dental practice to, to buy these uh, historic trades as well. Companies don't get a CGT allowance. Okay, and this is the main negative of trading via a company. As we mentioned, personal trades, you'll get £12,300 of tax-free CGT. Companies don't get that. They make £1 worth of gain. They will pay tax on that £1. So if you're just dabbling, if your expected gains are under 12 grand a year, then you're best off doing it personally. There's no real point doing it in a company. Reasons you may do it in the company is probably to avoid you taking cash out of your company. If you take cash out of your company, you'll pay a dividend, 32.5%, more than likely um, for, for most of you. And then you'll have to invest that in crypto. So some of you will want to do it via a limited company. And if you do, then you'll pay corporation tax rates on that income, on that gain. And it's just 19% flat rate. That is going up to 25%, to a maximum of 25% in April 2023. Whether it's a good idea to use a limited company is dependent on, on you and, and whether you can get that cash out at cheaper dividend rates or what your long-term plans are with the cash. If you have a lower earning spouse that you can get some cash out of, personally, I'd always want to do something like this in my personal name because of that £12,300 yearly exemption. Um, the increase in corporation tax is obviously going to be going to have an impact as well. So yeah, I mean, I've got a client that's that's looking at doing some serious trades via a bot, um, and he's going to set himself up as a limited company because we're concerned that 
it will HMRC would deem that to be income tax. And for him, that would mean paying tax at 40% because he's a higher rate taxpayer already. He's employed. Um, he's not a dentist that's trapped himself, but he's employed. He's already got a salary of 60K, I think. And therefore, if HMRC did deem the bot's profits to be income, he'll pay tax at 40%, whereas in the company, he'll pay 19%. So in that example, we are, we are going to put them into a limited company structure. As I mentioned at the beginning, there's a whole crypto asset manual that you guys can look at. You can read it. It's not very exciting. <laughs> I've read it a few times. Um, and there's also a chat, a, a, a forum on there. This is the first time I've seen HMRC do a forum. They don't send emails, okay? So for them to do such a thing as a forum is, is pretty, pretty out there for HMRC. And that's got quite a lot of cryptocurrency questions on it, actually. So it could be a good, um, a good source of knowledge for you guys if you have sporadic questions. But obviously, the main go-to for anything um, about your taxes and cryptocurrency would be your accountant. Uh, that's me. Yeah, as I mentioned, Facebook. You've all got me on Facebook, so I'm a member of that group there. So we'll um, we will feel free to just drop me a message on on that platform. Uh, I don't know, James is gone, but let's open it up. See if there's any questions. Up. I am here, my friend. I was just about to jump in to say thank you. Feel free to unshare your screen so we can see your face once more for the Q and A's. Yeah, which I'm trying are... to work out how to do it. Here oh, we go. oh, I see. Well, whilst you're doing that, I just want to say a big thanks to everybody on oh, behalf yeah. of. There we are, yeah. magic. We're back. We're back. Brilliant. I just want to say, oh wow, we've got quite a full house now. I've got quite a few people in here. I just want to say thank you on behalf of everybody to Mike for that really informative. Uh, presentation on all things tax and how it's relevant to dentists and well just not even specifically dentists uh, just generally people who trade crypto so thank you so much for that Mike we are now going to throw the mic out to the audience for everybody to jump in and participate with their questions anything that they'd like to ask Mike what we're going to do before oh, oh Tim okay Tim you go ahead far away mate go for it buddy Mike this Thanks so much. That's very informative. Just a quick question. Does, does the government recognise cryptocurrency as a legal um, as, a, as, a, as a legal currency? No. So how no. come they can charge tax for it? How comes they're taking revenue offers for it? Because it's although they don't they don't treat it as a currency, they yeah. treat it as an asset. So if you went on HMRC's website, they refer to it as crypto assets, not cryptocurrency. And just like you can invest in gold and then sell gold that would be fcgt yeah um, and that's why that they can they can tax it that's why it falls into cgt rules okay cool cool not necessarily okay. gold it could be any commodity yeah yeah, yeah i understand also. that but yeah it's yeah. funny how they can take money from something but don't recognize it in another hand Does yeah. that make sense? It, absolutely example. but they'll tax sorry mike they'll sorry, tax mate. it as they earn it they'll tax it as you sell it they'll tax it as you die they'll tax it when you buy it they'll tax it at some point so yeah they're going to get their fair share somehow um and this is this is them making sure they get some tax on some of it so if i left all my 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 cryptocurrency in bitcoin would i still yeah. get taxed year on year no no not at all so if you just left it if you're a hodler and you just bought it and left it there would be absolutely no tax on that with the exception of when you died, and if you died, it would go, go into your estate and would form a, um, uh, could potentially be taxed under inheritance tax rules. Right. So if I used altcoins to gain crypt to gain Bitcoin, then I wouldn't pay any tax. Depends if there's a gain when you went from the altcoin to the Bitcoin. There would be. Yeah. yeah so that's a, that's a chargeable event and that would yes that would mean that you would pay capital gains tax on that so if you bought an old coin for a thousand pounds yeah and then transferred that old coin when it was valued at five thousand pounds into yeah. bitcoin yeah. that's your chargeable event five grand less one grand four that grand. needs to go on okay. yeah four grand on your tax return as cgt capital gains tax yeah less my office expenses and all the rest of it 
<laughs> you can't deduct it for CGT rules, unfortunately. Yeah, so, right, okay. yeah, so you have to deduct that from your dental your dental income. All your well, I'm not a dentist, so um, but yeah, okay. yeah, okay, no, okay, cool. So I'm just trying to get my head around how it all works or where to yeah, so, assets until. So, yeah, okay. okay. See for CG, it was a good point actually, Tim. So. Those that have trading businesses will will obviously be offsetting office expenses, you know, computer costs, stuff like that. With with CGT, you can't do that. The rules are completely different. It's very stringent as to what you're actually allowed to claim against that gain. It's literally costs to buy that asset, costs to sell that asset. They're the only two things that you can you can really take advantage of um, uh, when when calculating the gain. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure, Good. Tim. Good. You're probably beginning to see how, Tim, that if you trade a lot, it can get very complex. You know, if you're dipping in and out of different currencies, are you with me? So you know that, yeah. soft, that software, recap.io? Yeah, I've got it here. I've got it here. Got Smashing. It here. Absolute lifesaver. And the thing is, you don't, the way you link it up to your exchanges is via something called an API code. Okay. Yeah. So, if you put if you put in the API code today, it retrospectively it retrospectively tallies all your trades from this tax year, the previous tax year. It's really good. Thank you. Save Thank your you. headache. That save your headache. But they, you know how you were saying earlier um, about the crystallizing into pounds, or whether or not it only applies if you crystallize it into pounds versus other cryptos. They they thought of that. The reason it would it would be very very easy to transfer your cryptos into tether, so like a stable coin for dollars, and then avoid tax altogether. You see, so that's I believe that's part of the reason why they've likely accounted for that. But it's just a it's just a uh, yeah that's the reason why that's in place. Does that all make sense? By the way, Tim, did that, did that help? Not not that bit, no. Really, no, no. <laughs> not the final bit. So. No. Tether being a stable coin because it's a dollar back crypto. Yeah. So for every tether, one tether is equal to one dollar. So no, effectively, yeah. effectively, if you trade into tether, you're trading four dollars. So you're effectively trading for fiat. Right? right. That so, means... Yep. Sorry, that means what? So that means, so what I'm saying to you is, what that would mean is it would be very easy to evade tax by doing that if it wasn't accounted for by the fact that HMRC will tax, it's a taxable event when you buy and trade into other cryptos, not just pounds. That's what I'm saying. Okay, cool. Yeah, now, I'll have a look at the recap thing because I'm so obviously still new and learning. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I plan on earning 12,300 more than a year. So I want to find the most... <laughs> Tax efficient way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And for your wife, Tim, so you can double that. Hey? And for your wife, so you want you double that figure? Yeah, no, I will do. Yeah, she's going to okay. be a lot of it. Yeah, she's going to be doing it as well. <laughs> she's actually got her own wallet. And she's got some money in it. So Brilliant. Be, Excellent. <laughs> Brilliant. But she's Brilliant. Not afraid. She just she just hodled it. You know. Cool. So, and Mike, when you were saying, we've got a few more questions. I'm going to chuck some more stuff out in just a minute. Um, we've got some anonymous questions that have been sent in as well. Um, let's say, let's use the example of Tim's wife. Um, at what point d would Tim's wife on paper have to be trading Tim's account? So say we've got Tim's account and it's registered under Tim's name. Okay. Yeah. Would for her, for them to gain their, because my understanding would be that you can share your capital gains allowance and your wife's capital gains allowance. You can pass, you can somehow transfer crypto to your so, spice. You'll do a better job explaining let, it than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're getting there with the terminology. You can't, you can't have two personal allowances myself because my wife is, doesn't have any. Okay, so that's not possible. But what you can do between husband and wife, and it is marriage that's the important thing in, in this, in this um, situation. Um, you can transfer things between spouses at nil gain, nil loss. Okay, so if I had a rental property that was uh, had a gain of 200 grand on it, and I wanted my wife to have half of it, I could transfer it to her, and we would pay no tax 
on that it, on that transfer because we're married. Okay, so essentially it passes right. to your spouse at, at nil gain, nil loss. So if you were sitting there with 100k's worth of crypto gains and you really wanted the cash for whatever reason, you would need to set up your spouse on um, the crypto Change. platform that you're trading on, uh, transfer her or him some some crypto asset, some cryptocurrency, and then get the, them to sell it on the open market. Likewise, right. you would sell it on the open market. And it's very important you follow those um, those processes to get it right. You can't fudge it. HMRC wouldn't allow you to go. I sold a hundred thousand pounds, but half of it was my wife's. Doesn't work. Right. I, that's brilliant, Tim. There's another something you might want to take what advantage of. Just there. What happens if it's your partner, not you, not not you're not married, but it's your partner you've been living together for years and years? As far as I'm aware, and I'd like to look it up to, to double check for, for anyone that wanted to rely on it, but I don't think it works. I think civil partnerships fine, marriage is fine, but long term partner would would just be um, you'd be just just be treated as a third party, and it's like you're gifting it to them, and gifting would mean it would be a tri uh, triggering a capital gains tax. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Good information, Mike. Thank you. Top nice. stuff. Top you stuff. Know your stuff. You know your stuff. <laughs> Mike <laughs> does know his stuff. Mike's a very knowledgeable kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always yeah, very yeah, impressed yeah. with Mike. I'm very, very happy to work with Mike on my on DWI. Guys, anybody else got any questions? Fire away. Anybody from the access to Bitcoin group got any There's questions? Some the chat. Yes, I saw some creep in. Let's go ahead and look at those. I'll I'll read them out, shall I? um here we go one from amina thank you for the amazing information and amazing webinar you're most welcome amina i had one question if we were investing into crypto via limited company as an associate would we lose the cgt ta uh, tax allowance of twelve thousand five hundred? mike over to Listen, you on that one does that make, does that yeah, make sense it yeah. makes sense yeah so you've got to be aware of um what's going on with limited company so the difference between personal investment, limited company investment is, is massive. So at the moment, personal investment, I get £12,300 of CGT allowance, which means I can make a gain of no more than £12,300 a year and pay no CGT. Okay, And that remains, doesn't matter if you've got a limited company or not, that remains if I invest in personal assets and personal things in my own name, then that continues. If I've got a company and my company invests in crypto or another asset, the company does not have a personal allowance. I still do, but I'm not using it because my company's investing. And that's the choice that you're making. And because you choose to invest via your company rather than via yourself, then your company will pay corporation tax on any income or gain that that trade makes at corporation tax rate, 19% in this example. So if you're looking at a, a dentist or another person that's working out whether to look at limited companies or not, because of that £12,300 personal allowance, personal investment probably always going to be preferred for something like this. The reason people use limited companies to make their investments is because they don't want to take the cash. They generate all their cash in their limited company. They don't want to take their cash out of the limited company because that's going to trigger them a, a taxable event. That'll be a dividend and they'll pay tax on that at 32.5%. So some people start then investing via the limited company route, which isn't as favourable. Um, but if that's the position you're in, that sometimes your, your hands are forced. Either you take cash out and invest personally and recognise that you're going to pay a third of it away to HMRC before you do that or you invest in a limited company. Awesome, awesome. Amina, I hope that cleared things up. We actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back to the questions in the chat in just two seconds. Mm. There was a rather interesting question that somebody sent me and it, they sent me it anonymously and it goes a little bit like this. So this particular individual, the circumstance they find themselves in, they set up a crypto account way back when and it was a personal account. Now, when you try to set up a corporate account or a business account on, let's pick a crypto exchange, Binance, and you already have a personal account, 
they won't let you do that to my knowledge so it's very very you can't have both they won't let you and the way they know it's you is because obviously you have to send your passport in and your details so what this particular individual wanted to know was would there be any issue legally if his wife was to set up a corporate account for their business which is 50 percent his 50 percent theirs and he traded it exclusively the most important thing is that that um profile has the company's name on it mm -hmm. and if it has the company's name on it then it's fine that's totally legit right yeah okay yeah, yeah. Right. a company is its own legal entity okay so if i had my if i had a company oh i appreciate finance may not allow this but if i had a company i could invest personally my company can invest my wife can invest that's completely fine from HMRC's viewpoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. So long the legal documents state that one wallet or one exchange, whatever it is, one profile is me, one is my company's, one is my wife's. And that if I went to the uh, account in Binance, it says uh, Mike Bryan for my personal, uh, Mike Bryan Limited for my company, and then my, my wife's for my wife's. It's, it's all about the legal documentation. That HMRC would look at. Mike, can I just ask you another question? Yeah. Sorry to be interrupted. Right. Bitcoin's been around obviously for a, like the number of years that it has been. But what about all the, the all the scallywags in the world that use Bitcoin for trading this and trading that and don't pay tax, don't pay this, don't pay that? Do the companies like exchange like Binance submit all their records to HMRC or Kraken submit all their records to HMRC. I mean, the question I'm asking is, do they know? So well, yes. yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So why declare it if they don't know? No, they do know. They do know. They when you register on Binance, if you want to deposit with a bank account, you have to go through KYC. You have to hand your passport. Yeah, yeah. In. they've done all the passport, driving license, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, they, then they know it's any central. There's two types of exchanges. There's yeah. a centralized exchange and there's a decentralized exchange. Okay. Legally, because a centralized exchange handles fiat money, it has to know who you are. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah. all I those know. records of what you've traded is all assigned to your name. So it's very easy to find if there's been any discrepancy between what you've declared and what you've the gains that you've made in that tax year a decentralized exchange well put it like they, they don't i don't want to give any unsolicited advice but they they're that much more unlikely to be able to find you because there's nothing linking your public bitcoin crypto address to your actual details apart from maybe your ip address but they'd really have to go digging i don't think i don't think hmrc even really know what a decentralized exchange is never mind going and digging through uh lines of code and software to find out what you own but that's not to say do with that information, that information what, what you please you yeah know yeah. What I mean. yeah i just want to yeah. understand why how, how so things happen that's all with with banks tim banks yeah. um obviously actually feed hmrc information they will tell them if you earn interest on a bank account and you haven't declared it that's why they can get some quite targeted inquiries into people in the uk tax returns um i don't think the crypto world is is that advanced at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. James is going to interject. Coinbase sent out a letter from HMRC to all their customers about 12 months ago. So Coinbase is obviously one of the biggest, most established ones. Um, so you might expect for HMRC to approach them first, but it certainly sets a precedent, does it, that they might come after yeah. Binance and uh, they will like that. Yeah, they, they, I agree. They, I agree. Yeah, they will because HMRC know that they don't have the manpower to to go for um, what they used to do, which was almost pick random people and see if there's anything dodgy going on. They need to be more digital. There's this thing called making tax digital that's coming in in the next few years. It was already here for VAT purposes. It's coming in for income tax purposes. It will be more Big Brothers watching you. All this information will get fed to HMRC digitally, and it needs to then agree it to your annual submissions via your, your tax return.
Cool. Thanks for that. No, that's well. Thank you. Hope that helped, Tim. There was a second part to what I was saying earlier, and it's just slipped my mind. What was it? Yeah, so we were talking about that anonymous individual, and he wished to know if they set up that uh, business account, shared business account between him and his wife. Was that a problem? So we established that that's not an issue. Would it change things, Mike, if the business was solely owned by his wife, yet he traded the account? Is that an issue? No, again, it's all about the legal documents. So if I was a company and I owned the shares in this company, mm -hmm. if it was a big company, I might not work in this company. I might appoint directors, that are just people that I pay to, to go, go to work for me. Okay, so the actual person that's running this company's um, wallet or trades is almost irrelevant. It's the fact that the company is the re registered individual in order to get it registered, they'll check shareholders, they'll check directors, you'll need to jump through that red tape. But once it's set up, actually it's pretty irrelevant who's, who's actually doing that, that trading. Do you know that's so, so useful because anybody out there, quite often what happens is people start out their crypto journey with a personal account and mm. then they realize somewhere down the line that it actually suits them better to have a corporate account or a business mm. account. So yeah. to get your wife or someone you trust to own that, uh, your wife, your husband, whatever, or someone you trust to own that. And then for you to be able to trade a corporate account using the the uh, funds in that and to know that that's not an issue, that's actually really valuable. So thank you for that. Cool. Pleasure. Awesome. We're learning a lot today. Right. Brilliant. We've got some more questions sneaking in. We've got one from Zivar. Thank you, Mike. Uh, could I ask what happens if you hold Bitcoin and don't actually spend it? Is that a taxable event? Do you declare it? what asset you purchased with Bitcoin. I think that's the pregnant gains that you were talking about, wasn't it, Mike? No, sorry, James. I think he says actually spend it. So I think he's talking about if you go and buy pizza with your Bitcoin. Oh, example. sorry. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I've completely misread that. Yeah. No so, worries. Yeah, he said, uh, Zivar said, if you actually spend it, is that a taxable event? Do you declare that what asset you have purchased with Bitcoin? Yep, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah. Basically, yeah, although you don't declare the, that you bought a pizza or, you know, some dental treatment with that Bitcoin, you, you transfer, you, you, you oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you, you have a deemed sterling amount. Okay? You, you use average rates on that particular day to work out what the sterling amount of that Bitcoin was. And that's the figure that you use as sales proceeds in your um, calculation when you're working at capital gains tax. Awesome. Kasim, I see you, my friend. You've been waiting really patiently with your hand up. How are you, buddy? What's happening, James? How you doing? <laughs> I'm tremendous, my brother. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Have you got a question that you'd like to ask Mike? I do. I do. Yeah. I'm, I just wanted some clarification on crystallizing gains. So let's say you sell Bitcoin um, for a profit and you incur a gain. Um, and then you said you can sort of buy another coin. Um, can you then and use that coin to buy more bitcoin or can you not buy that asset again for 30 days to avoid bed and breakfasting so bed and breakfasting rules are on the same coin so if you sold bitcoin on a particular day and you bought bitcoin at any point within the next 30 days that's when the bed and breakfasting rules would kick in if you bought an altcoin then that's not bed and breakfasting. If you bought an old, old coin and then transferred it to Bitcoin within 30 days of selling that Bitcoin, that would be bed and breakfasting. I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I sort of figured that, but yeah, there's yeah. no way out, I guess. No, they're, they're, they'll catch you. That's why they've got these rules. They've thought about it. And th this wasn't around because of crypto. This was around because of stocks and shares. You know, it's a tried and tested rule. It, it, it does actually work. So, um, yeah, they've thought about that one quite, quite, hard, quite hard and... Um, It'll, they'll catch you out if you do go back into Bitcoin. Unless you, you use your spouse's um, account, which is something we talked about in the presentation, you know, you could sell, your spouse could rebuy it the same day. It doesn't have to be a spouse, it could be a friend, someone that's allowing you to, you know, use their platform, then that's going to mitigate your risk. Fair enough. All right, cheers, Mike. Thanks for your presentation. No worries, Kasim. Cheers. You're welcome, Kasim. Good to see you, my friend. Cool. We have another question from Amina. What happens when one is not married? Um, I think I saw that question pop up at some point during the presentation. I'm, I'm assuming that refers to transferring the, uh, the what was, what was the terminal? Yes. Nil gain, nil loss. 
That's that was it. And uh, did we clear that up earlier, Mike? You said that it, it only applies if you've got a civil partnership or you're married that you can take advantage of that. Is that correct? Yeah. Again, I'm not I'm 95 percent correct of that. I double checked with long standing partners, people that own the house together. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's it's marriage or civil partnership. Cool. Yeah, it'd be good to know that, actually, because that's going to be very relevant to Tim. Um, so uh, be interested to hear what you get back to us on that one. Yeah, I'll pop it on the group. Cool. Thank you for that. Uh, Lisa has said, thanks, guys. You're most welcome, Lisa. Thanks for joining us today. Kevin, how are you, my friend? Kevin has got a great question. Is Kevin still here? Oh, he's disappeared. Oh, OK, we, we've just uh, missed him. Kevin's asked, if you were to buy speculative NFTs, how does that work? I would assume that NFTs, for anybody who doesn't know, non-fungible tokens, generally little bits of art which are stored on the blockchain. I would assume that those fall under assets and therefore any profit over 12,300 would be liable to capital gains tax. Mike, is that something that you know a little bit more about? Yeah, it's the same as, uh, you, did you say that they're essentially artwork or something like that, is that what you said? Yeah, so um, there are little pieces of art that are, well, the reason that they are, well, they're, they're stored on the blockchain. So it's just like if you own a crypto, except yeah. it's a piece of art and it's totally unique and you can store it in your wallet is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Oh, Non-fungible. Uh, they're not pleasing to look at, then I assume it's, it's... Uh, no, they can be. They, they can, can be. be. Right. They can be very aesthetic or they can be very unesthetic. Some, lots of them have, they're mainly me memes and memes, yeah. memes, however you like to say it. So they're more amusing, I suppose, than actual beautiful uh, Mona Lisa's, et cetera, yeah, Rembrandt's. Yeah. It, it, it's going to be the same as buying an asset, a crypto asset, essentially. Uh, and, uh, same CGT rules. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Kevin, if you're listening afterwards, hope that helped. And Amina has said, thank you. You're most welcome, Amina. And Mohammed has jumped in. Mohammed, how are you, my friend? Thanks a lot for this webinar, James and Mike. You're most welcome. Is it both Binance? Mohammed's question is, is it both Binance and Kraken that doesn't allow having both a personal and a corporate account? Shall I answer that one, Mike? Is that OK? Yeah. 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 So Mohammed, in my experience, that when you already have a personal account and when you're asked to fill in your details to create a business account, they don't tend to permit it in my experience. So I know for a fact it happens on Kraken firsthand. I know from secondhand accounts that it happens on Binance. So hopefully that answers your question. The, the short answer is yes, they, they both don't allow it. Are there I any wonder if James, could, one, one, I assume one could have a personal account on Binance and one could have a, 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 a limited company account on Kraken. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, separate, separate entities, mix and match. Just the, the issue is that they won't let you have both on any one exchange. Yeah. yeah. And then, 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 are there any other? So the second part of Muhammad's question, Tim, I see you. I'm coming to you in a second. The second part of Muhammad's question is, are there any other exchanges that allow both Muhammad? Not that I know of. If you can find any, I'd be very interested to know, but not in my experience. Tim, you got another question far away. Yeah, coming back, Mike, coming back to the asset question. Uh, no. capital gains and assets if if i bought a car for a thousand pounds and sold it for 1500 quid yeah. would i be liable for that 500 pound gain no you're getting technical tim um well, so yeah, i'm just trying to be sort of yeah a car no 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 it's a fair question yeah, the car is what, what we call any asset that you buy no sure yeah, it, yeah. well some assets yes some assets no so a car is something we call a wasting chattel Okay, that means that it's got a life of under 50 years and would be exempt from CGT purposes. All right, okay. I didn't um, okay. But artwork, for example, maybe. Whiskey, good question, uh, maybe. Uh, so there's certain things out there that would avoid CGT um, if, you're, if you're clever at playing the game. Hmm, so we can flip as many cars as we like and we pay no tax. Yeah. Apart from if it yeah, becomes but, a sole source of income, I'm guessing. Well, exactly. I, know, I, I know for a fact that's what Chris Evans does, right? He'll buy a Ferrari for five grand and sell it for seven or eight, you know? Doesn't pay yeah. any capital, doesn't pay any tax. Yeah. Not, not I'm going to get in the car business, but <laughs> down the road in Carlo, I don't know he does, you know? <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's a good it's question. A business, 
yeah. what James said, if it's an actual business, so like you, like if you're flipping houses, you flip one house, that's capital gains. You flip multiple houses, it's an income. Yeah. You're going to income tax. If you're, if you're Chris Evans and you do that one car, that CGT might get away with it. If you do multiple cars, then it's income tax and he should be paying 20 or 40 or 40. Okay, I don't know what he does, but I mean, that's no. just, just that I know that he, he buys and sells lots of different. There's, there's the CGT rules when you get into different assets. There's there's many rules out there. But yeah, cars cars would be exempt. Just trying to sort of swerve around the corner, if that makes sense. Yeah, I like that. I like that analogy. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Brilliant. No cool, 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 cool. Right. Zivar has got one. I would think we're running out of time here a little bit. Does anyone else, Gregor, do you have any questions? I just saw, I saw you looking, looking a bit animated there. I thought you might have had your hand up. All good. I was scratching my face. Sorry. Oh, I see. I see. I just caught you out of the corner of my eye. I, so I, I take it my, uh, the fees that I pay on trades, that would be tax deductible then. Yeah. Yeah. So and any cost. If I was to use software like that recap, does that automatically calculate it for you? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. That's, that's why recap. Sorry, Mike. Go on. I was going to say, interestingly, the costs of recap, if you have to pay for it, wouldn't be tax deductible because that isn't a cost to buy or sell crypto. It is a cost of generating a tax report. So you wouldn't get tax relief on, on the software costs for recap. Hmm. Hmm. But don't you get tax relief on what your accountant charges you as a dentist? Yeah, because that's income. It's not capital gains. Oh, yeah. the nuance. The nuance is insane. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, thanks yeah. for that. Cool. Um, right, I'm learning loads today, by the way. This is brilliant. Cool, right. We have one question that snuck in here at the final whistle. Zivar has asked the hypothetical question, what if we buy the Ferrari with BTC and then flip it? <laughs> <laughs> that's where we've officially got lost at that point yeah who knows who knows capital gains tax maybe um yeah you could i don't know set up a charity in asia and then siphon the money off over there and then bring it back by the virgin <laughs> islands and you probably wouldn't pay any tax yeah there we go there is a nice clear concise answer for you zivar i hope that helped my friend awesome right cool i have oh wait amina's uh, muhammad's crept in with another question here sorry um also does recap dot io take into account the bread and breakfast rules that's a brilliant question Mohammed. i do we think that's likely mike given that uh isn't is bread and breakfast a little complex isn't it it should because it should it should look at any any purchases within 30 mm. days of selling something if it's if it's doing its job properly um i haven't used recap if it was me i would test it and see what it what what it spits out but i haven't tested it so okay cool yeah sorry we're a little uncertain on that one mohammed might be one that uh you'd like to look into yourself and get back to us because we're learning as well because the, the the thing about taxes it's so nuanced it really is and crypto is something that's very much at the pinnacle of advancing technology so quite often hmrc don't even have clear answers on these sorts of things as well but mike's done a tremendous 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 job of explaining that today I actually don't think that there is a definitive resource on where, on how crypto is related to tax, generally speaking. So I, I think Mike's done a really, really brilliant job of explaining that to all of us. I've learned loads. Thank you for that, Mike. Another great presentation. Pleasure. I hope that everybody has enjoyed that today. We are going to draw a line under that now, if that's good with you, Mike, unless anybody's got some very, very, very final questions that they'd like to slip in. We'll give you five seconds, Grace. You're welcome, Tim, my friend. Thank you for coming. I think we're all good. I think that's a wrap, Mike. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks all. Pleasure Double being here, James. Up. Double thumbs up. Cool. Awesome to see everybody. I hope everybody has a tremendous uh, Sunday evening. We're going to wrap up now and I'll see you all later. Goodbye. Thanks, guys.